So in this problem, we're told that if a snowball melts so that its surface area decreases at a rate of 5 cm squared per minute, find, that, find the rate at which the diameter decreases when the diameter is 11. So let's just break down this problem here. So what they're asking us for is the rate at which the diameter decreases. So basically what they're asking us for, the rate of change of diameter with respect to time. So we can say that that is ddt, so the derivative of diameter with respect to time. So right, that's what they're asking us for. But now let's write down the information they give us. They tell us that the diameter is 11. That's what we're trying to find, the time at which the diameter is 11. So we know that d is equal to 11. We're also told that the surface area decreases at a rate of 5 centimeters per minute. So since it's like a rate, we write uh, the, ch the derivative of surface area with respect to time. And they tell us that that is um, decreases at a rate of 5 centimeters per minute. So since it's decreasing, it's minus 5 because it's going down at 5 centimeters squared per minute. All right, so now that we got all this, let's actually solve the problem. So in order to do this, what we want to do is first just write the surface area formula since a snowball is a sphere so we want to use um, the surface area of a sphere formula so surface area is equal to 4 pi r squared and if you notice this problem here for this formula it's we, uh, we have a radius instead of diameter and so they're asking us to find the rate of change of diameter so what we want to do is change this to diameter so we know that 2 times r is equal to so the diameter is basically two times the radius. And so if we want to just solve for r, we get r equals diameter divided by two. So we can replace our um, radius with that. So if we re our, rewrite our formula, we'll get sa is equal to four pi d over two squared. So now that we got it in diameter, it's gonna be easier to find the rate of change of diameter. So now that we got it this way, what we can do is differentiate this side because this is going to give us, if we differentiate this side, we're going to get uh, d ddt. So if we differentiate this, we're going to get the derivative of surface area with respect to time. So the rate of change of surface area is equal to, or actually before we do this, what we should do is just first simplify our formula. So we have it like this. What we should do is do sa is equal to 4 pi, and then let's actually just like square this number. So d squared is going to be d over 2 squared is going to be d squared over 4 and then these 4 and 4 are going to cancel so basically surface area is going to be equal to uh, pi times d squared and that uh, simplifying is just going to make it easier when we actually take the derivative so let's go ahead and take the derivative so if we take the derivative of surface area we're going to get um, the, the derivative of surface area with respect to time and then on the other side, what we have to do is take the derivative of this. And so what we have here is a constant multiplied by um, a variable raised to an exponent. But since we're differentiating with respect to a different variable, which is time for d, we're going to have to use the chain rule. So it's going to be pi. And then if we differentiate 2d, we're going to have to do, or d squared, it's going to become 2d multiplied by the derivative of d. So it's going to become multiplied by 2d times the derivative of d. And we know that d, the derivative of d with respect to time is just d, 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 t. And so we'll have it like this, d, 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 t. And now that we've got it like this, we have all the values we need, and we can just plug it in. So surface area, the rate of change of surface area, we already know is minus 5. They told us that. So minus 5 is equal to pi times 2 times d. And they tell us d, well, d's diameter. And we know that d is 11. So we can plug in 11. And then we multiply it by uh, d, 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 t. And so essentially what we can do here is we have minus 5 is equal to 2 times 11 is 22, 22 pi times d, 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 t. And we can get d, 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 t by itself if we just divide by 22 pi. And so if we divide by 22 pi, we're going to get d, 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 t is equal to uh, minus 5 over 22 pi. And the thing is here, you might assume this is our answer, but there's a little change we have to make. So in this case, it's negative because this is the rate at which it's changing. And so it's going in the negative direction, which means it's decreasing. But in the problem, they're asking us for the rate at which it decreases. So it won't be a negative number since they're already assuming it decreases. They're just asking for the rate at which it decreases, not the rate of change. So instead of it being negative, it's just going to be positive. So the answer to this is going to be 5 pi or 5 over 22 pi. And so, yeah, that's going to be the answer to this problem.